was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was like, what? <laughs> Alright guys, finally finished with this thing. This was way more involved than I thought it was going to be. So, I, right off the bat, I was caught off guard. I didn't expect a Lexan body. And, man, it 
this has a lot of detail and it's a lot of work I do not like the way it goes together with drilling the holes in the body um, after the fact the dimples don't exactly line up to where the holes need to be and it after you paint it which is what it shows in the instructions to uh, you know wait till the end and drill you know each each piece at a time as you go don't drill all the holes and they're all different sizes and you know I don't have a metric drill bit set all mine are standard so I'm just trying to equate you know what's four millimeter what's five millimeter um, the headlights you're supposed to drill three small holes and then cut out the middle well the flex hand is so hard up here in the nose that I mean you saw me earlier in the video I couldn't even cut this front lip with scissors, full-size scissors, because it Lexan is so thick right there, because there's so many curves and stuff in that piece. Very solid. So that was very challenging. I, uh, you know me, I'm not a Lexan fan. I'm not an expert at doing Lexan bodies. And I know I'm doing this the obscure way, painting it on the outside and weathering it. But, man, that was difficult. I don't think this would be good for your first body set to try and do. <clears throat> Honestly, a hard body is easier to paint than this. Um, even if you just painted it on the inside, then you could probably see the dimples and stuff better. But again, the dimples aren't in the exact right spot. They're close, but they're not exactly where they need to be. So, yeah. <laughs> Very challenging kit. Chassis, simple, easy, normal, RC four-wheel drive goodness. Trail Finder 2, long wheelbase. I dig it. Love the tire and wheel combo. Got to drive it a little bit, and... Uh, you know, those tires seem to be gripping real good. It's a nice new compound of those. I really like that. But the body, man, I'm still I'm still a little mad at it. That was such a... I probably had an honest six hours just in the assembly yesterday. Not counting the days of painting and drying and painting and drying and weathering and drying. Um, it's, I've got a week in this build. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Now, I know some people may not have a problem with it. People have a lot more experience at Lexan than me, but I built, uh, it has to be at least over 100 kits in my day, the last 30 years since I was 10 years old putting together to my kits. So this was a very challenging kit. And uh, yeah, so it looks good. I'm happy with how it turned out, especially for Lexan, because again, I'm not a Lexan expert. And I did leave out one step in the video. I didn't catch any film of it because it was hot and I was sweating my butt off outside. After I weathered it, I did do a matte clear. This is a Tamiya PS55. This is a polycarbonate matte clear finish, which I was surprised to see because most polycarbonate Lexan bodies are painted from the inside. They look glossy. You don't need to seal it. And I did a small test on one of the fenders before I cut it out and it did not mess up the rust streaks at all. I did let the rust streaks dry for 48 hours basically and it was so humid here it wasn't drying very good. And I set it out in the sun for a day and it finally finally dried and the same thing with it on the chrome pieces it takes forever to dry on chrome and uh, yeah it's still a little tacky but it won't rub off now <laughs> when I touch it. So another week or so, this thing will be fully, fully dry. In uh, my haste to do a video, I didn't really think about the interior. I didn't buy any other color Lexan paints. Um, I picked up some now for some other projects, but I didn't have any when I ordered the Lexan paints for this. And that's another thing. I've, I know people that have done it. Uh, Jeremy at Big Squid is doing it on his. If you scuff this body, the Lexan body with the Scotch-Brite of some kind, <clears throat> scuff the whole thing, you can use regular paint on it. I don't know how scratch resistant it is. I've heard it's invincible. I've heard it will scrape off. Um, this will probably still scrape off as well if you hit something hard enough. I did already put some pretty serious scratches in the body before I uh, weathered it. I scratched the paint down a little bit to knock off some blemishes that I had from just painting outside and to add a little bit of well-placed scrapes and stuff. And like especially where I'd put blue over the white I'd scrape down where you can see the white come through a little bit. That one's pretty serious, but <laughs> just to, just something like that. Just to bring a little more depth to it, show a little more wear to it. I uh, tried to put the rust streaks where I thought it needed to be, like up here where, you know, it's dirty from somebody shutting the door from up there and in the cracks and stuff like that where the body edge. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I didn't think about the interior. So I just, I had some blue left. 
I did a full two cans of the uh, blue. I don't even know what the can is to tell you what color it was now. Um, this matched a picture I found online from some Toyota uh, museum. I think it was in Arizona. And they have a whole bunch of every FJ ever made. And this, they had one like this. It was beautifully restored. And I like that color combo. And I knew weathered it would look a little bit better. That white, the rust streaks really, really took to that white. So you had to wipe kind of quick on it. Um, looking back, I wish I'd have wiped a little more and then let it dry and then come back in other places and added it instead of trying to do it in one full pass. But I was in a hurry. But it, it didn't take as well to this and it wiped off this easier. But that white, that Lexan paint white, that's my paint, it really latched onto that. So you had to get it on and then get it off quick. But it's it's like a coffee stain, the entire thing. And we've got some streaks and just trying to go with the flow. You know, the movement of the vehicle. We've got streaks going that way, coming down the side. Up here, it's kind of washing down this way. The roof is front to back. So you get that look that it's rusty naturally, but it's not perfect. But it's pretty good for Lexan. I, like I said, I, I'm not a Lexan expert, so this has turned out phenomenal for, for me doing it. But anyway, I keep getting off topic. Back to the interior. I didn't have a plan. I painted it blue. I painted it on the inside like you're supposed to. So the interior still looks kind of stark, bright blue. And I used the seat cover as the last little bit I had of the seat cover I've had for 15 years. And uh, it's dirty and stained. Uh, I got to the ugliest part of it because I've used the good parts of it for other trucks. And I just covered both bench seats and that as best I could. And I used some of that sticky back uh, felt to get it Hobby Lobby. And just made it some carpet for the front and rear floorboard. And it also hides the rough edge of the seat covers. And, uh, you know, from inside here, it looks pretty dang good. You can't see any of the imperfections. There, you, the seam on the edge of the seat is hidden by that B pillar. And the back seat's hidden by the C pillar. So it worked out really well. And um, just put the steering wheel on. Didn't do anything extra on the inside. Um, you do have a nice little cargo area back there where you could put some scale stuff. But... It's not easy to take the interior out. <laughs> so to remove the interior, you have to remove two screws from here on each side and your blinker lights on the back quarter on both sides. And that was my second biggest complaint about the kit. The hardware. They've switched some of the small stuff. is Phillips head. And I've got a, a uh, computer and, and electronics screwdriver set with fine fine I've got 18 different sizes of Phillips head and I stripped every one of them out I just had no luck with their Phillips head stuff I wish they would have stuck with the metric with the 0.5 or, or whatever or even smaller because that stuff is so much more solid not an issue with any of that hardware on the kit even without my good Bauhaus tool I didn't strip out anything metric but Phillips head stuff man I was struggling with especially the 1.4 millimeter screws that a lot of uh, like this had one of the bigger one one of that I think the door handles had one of those they just I could get two or three turns out of it and just screw it into plastic and it would strip right out the head of it so that was kind of a, a letdown caused me a little bit of headache um, one issue there was a little correction in the instruction manual which I don't know where I put it I think it was step nine a the rear body mount has two places to mount the body post that go into the chassis. Right, so this piece in here, your back plate that holds your lights, your license plate, a whole lot of stuff has to go in it. There's like 10 screws you have to go into that. And that was extremely difficult to get all the holes drilled in the body and lined up. And the instructions show this piece here, you mount these body posts in the outside hole. There's only one hole. And on the actual part, there's two holes. And they need to be on the rearward set of holes. Not on the front holes. So that was, that was one little glitch, which caused me to have to remove all those screws, take the lights off, the license plate off, and take that out of the truck completely and try to change those out. So that, that caused some damage because those small screws, I had some stripped out. You can see there's some boogered up stuff in here where I had to just cut screws and I've scratched the interior Lexan paint with Dremel trying to grind screws down. So that was very, very difficult. And, uh, yeah, I can't imagine trying to run LEDs on this kit because that would be would be hard. <laughs> There's just so many lights in that rear. And you can see here's your front vents that are holding your interior in. 
Uh, those went on pretty easy. They used the larger size screws, no problem. Um, but yeah, the front piece was very challenging as well. was held on the front with this backing plate, and there's seven screws and an alignment pin. So first off, you have to drill eight holes in the front of it, which luckily all but one are the same size, and then try to get them all through. And then if you force a couple through, then they're not going to line up with this. So then you have to come back and kind of hog out the holes a little bit <clears throat> and uh, make it fit. But luckily, there's a little bit of room for forgiveness between the way that mounts because there's so much support on the inside. The hole doesn't have to be exactly the right size to fit together and hold it in. But that was just super challenging. And it was actually super stressful for me. Because again, I'm, I'm nervous with Lexan. I've not experienced enough at it. I've never, I've had more bad experiences painting Lexan than I've had good. But luckily, my saving grace was the patina. I was able to hide some of the stuff that I didn't do right. Um, I, I hate sticker window trims, so I tried to uh, use an enamel pen and paint the window trim on this. And on one side it bled through in the corner, the mask stuff. It masked and kept off the Lexan paint perfect, but that enamel just went right under it. So, got a few little smudges here and there, which plays to the patina stuff, no problem. And, uh, yeah, it looks a little beat up and worn. It's fine. <laughs> After I did those rear side windows, I needed to do the rear back door windows, and I just there was no way I knew it was going to be bad if I tried it, so I just left it as is. I just used but. stuff I had spares sitting around. I had a brand new, this is like a 1040 ESC, nothing special at all. Real simple. I used the RC4 drive RTR. Uh, radio system that was on the Trail Finder 3. So I had the receiver and the radio off that. I've got a twister high torque servo that I pulled off the C2X. And I've got a Holmes Hobby Torque Master Expert 27 turn, which I took that out of the Amigo because it was way too quick on there. And on this, it actually wasn't too bad. So I think with a little bit better radio system and we can fine tune the uh, throttle response a little bit, it'd be a decent little setup. But, um, Overall, it crawled pretty good. It's very stiff, though. The leaf spring's got a lot of breaking in to do. Um, that was one thing that worried me when I first put it together. Is you can see our rear shackle angle is all wrong because the leaf springs are arched so extremely. So over time, it'll get better. Thing, it is kind of cool. Um, they kind of like the SCX 10.3. The body post point down, and they go into brackets that are on the chassis that are specific to this body set, the bumper mount and the rear bumper mount bolts on. It's just strictly a body mount. Then you do put uh, body pins in from the bottom, so you have a seamless look on the outside. Uh, it comes off without too much fuss. You can get to the body pins. They're not difficult or hidden or anything. They're pretty easily accessed. But I think that about sums it up. This thing is big. It barely fits here in this miniature scale garage we built. I need my big shot back so we can uh, get some better shots of this thing. But, um, yeah, it doesn't look bad. I'm happy with my, my outcome. So we'll see what we can do with this thing in the future. I uh, need to get some wheel time on. Like I said, to soften up those leaf springs. Love the tire and wheel combo. Always love the trail finder platform. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys watching and following the build. And stay tuned for more cool things to come. Keep it scale. I'll see you all next time.